Peters moved on down to Asheville. Hello, folks, and welcome to the FS Elite Podcast, Episode 2, an interview with uh, Dovetail Games. And we're going to get right into things, but first uh, I'll introduce Jordan, who's along with the, with me for the ride here. How you doing, Jordan? Hi, Nick. How's everything? Uh, pretty good. I just finished a flight to London last night and stayed up way too late, so... Uh, Still flying long hauls, I see. Yeah, well, I've been trying to mix it up. Um, I'll try and get you in something smaller at some point. Well, I was, You have to try the Dash 8 at some point. Yeah, I know, I know. We always say that. Well, it's $90, and I just spent my money on... Um, what did I spend my money on? Active Sky. Active Sky, thank you. How do you know that? That's you told pretty- me. Oh, well, fair enough. Good, I have brain. <laughs> good, good for you for remembering. Uh, Callum should be joining us later, but uh, let's introduce uh, Amy here. This week we have a very special guest, uh, Amy Sanjay of uh, Dovetail Games. Dovetail Games is located in the UK, and they currently support FSX Steam Edition, as well as Euro Fishing and Train Simulator 2016. They have confirmed that they plan on releasing a new flight sim in 2016 based on Microsoft flight technology. That in quotes, we don't know what that means. Uh, but we have that to look forward to next year. And uh, today, Amy, it's graciously agreed to come on the podcast to talk about FSX Steam Edition and how uh, Dovetail relates to the flight sim community. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Amy. No problem. Um, so let's start with a few basic questions here and we'll kind of see where the conversation conversation goes. Let's start with the kind of the step one. How did Dovetail get started? Dovetail Games is um, obviously it's it's had quite a bit of we've had quite a bit of success with Train Simulator. Um, getting into a flight simulator seemed to be the natural step next step for us from trains. And of course, FSX, it's like they say, the world's favorite flight simulator. Yeah, it's certainly we- the most popular. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? You know, Microsoft discontinued the, the Flight Simulator franchise, and, you know, we, we saw an opportunity. Yeah, well, I, I really, you know, I'm really trying to uh, be optimistic about it because I'm you know, the thing with Microsoft and the closing of Asus is there's just so many people in the Flight Sim community that just, you know, got really angry at Microsoft. So I'm really, I'm really hoping that you guys can take the torch and run with it and do amazing stuff. What do you guys hope to accomplish with particular, particularly FSX Steam Edition? So with FSX Steam Edition, what we wanted to do is we wanted to take FSX, a popular flight simulator, which is loved by thousands of people. We wanted to bring it to a wider audience. So um, we chose the Steam platform on on which we distribute our other our other simulators and prom- promote it there. I mean, from what. Well, since since launch, you know we've we've had so many people, you know, who used to play earlier incar- incarnations of the flight simulator franchise, you know, seeing it, saying, "Oh my gosh, you know, I used to play this years ago," and getting back into it. It's really great to see. Yeah, I I um, saw a post when it first came out uh, from a former Asus team member, and that's that was the team that developed FSX in the first place. Uh, and they were very excited to see Steam Edition coming out and kind of seeing, you know, the work that they did so long ago uh, being continued and worked on now. So it's, it's a very exciting development, I think. So obviously the community aspect of Flight Sim is a huge part of our interests. How does Dovetail view the user base, and do they plan to work with the community as we go along further? It's common knowledge. I mean, not just at Dovetail Games, but across the entire flight simulation community. That if the community, the flight simulation community, specifically the FSX community, hadn't sprang up, and if it, if it wasn't for them, you know, FSX wouldn't be what it is. The flight simulation industry wouldn't be what it is. Do you guys work directly with the developers, or take any of the interaction from the community into what you create uh, inside of the studio? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, since launch of FSX, we've listened to to feedback from 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 the community into what they want to see brought to FSX Steam Edition. And in addition to that, we're also working with you know third party developers and publishers to bring their stuff to FSX Steam Edition. So we've been working with people like Just Flight, A Two A Simulations, Hi Fi Technology, Rex, Orbix. You know, we we have very good relationships with a lot of the the key software developers it's it's really important for us they're the ones who've kept this 
industry going. So it would be silly not to. Right. No, of course. Not it's an interesting. Not it's a inter very interesting aspect because obviously, as a developer, you want to keep your your platform somewhat proprietary. But working with the add-on developers is probably what keeps the industry thriving in a way. Yeah, exactly, and we recognize that. So it's very, it's a very interesting side of the business that most people probably don't point out. Everyone expects everything from everyone, <laughs> as the forums would say. Yeah, the flight sim community can be very uh, unforgiving, let's just say it that way, which is unfortunate because, you know, I know you guys are working really hard to, you know, build the next simulator and try and, like I said earlier, pick up the baton from where uh, Microsoft left off with developers like now like this majestic q400 and all these other airplanes that are essentially running outside of the sim do you guys intend to work with i i guess they're they're running things outside of the simulator due to limitations of the the, the program itself yeah. i'm not sure, sure if that's something you guys are working on or if that's something you can talk about that that's kind of the direction i was going to go um i mean in terms of fsx we're working with developers and um and publishers to bring as many add-ons to FSX Steam Edition as we can. And um, while, well, yeah, we recognize that the limita the limitations to FSX are can sometimes be difficult for developers to work with. While it's not it's not something we can really address with FSX Steam Edition because we're merely distributing FSX, right, 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 we don't right, right. actually own it. But it's Understood. definitely something that we'll consider. In future projects, in terms of the limit, you know, the limitations, you know, we want to bring something to market next year that's going to be for modern PCs that's going to where people won't have to work outside the limitations because everything will be up to date. Does that make sense? That makes 100 percent sense. I understand where okay. you're going with that. Yeah. And that's a, ver a very encouraging answer, I might say, too, because a lot of us have been kind of concerned about you know what's coming next and you know, i mean obviously you don't know a lot because you can't talk about it until what january you said but i mean it's yeah. it sounds like it's a really exciting development yeah I th everyone at dovetail games is looking forward to it one thing i can say actually going back to your introductory statement about it being based on microsoft flight technology that's a collective term for the microsoft flight simulator technology so it's not specific to any one any one title it's just, it's the cumulative Microsoft flight simulation technology that, that we have and are, are using to, to develop our new sim. And that's great news for, for people because they heard that original phrase in the press release. Yeah, it was went, really badly, that, that was badly worded. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was careful, careful when I asked the question to try and not do that, but thank you for uh, clear, clearing that up. Uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about in terms of uh, how long you want to support the Steam platform? What do you what do you see for doing it? In what do you see with it happening uh, in between now and the time you release the next simulator? We'll definitely stick with Steam. Um, it, it's a good plat. It's a great PC gaming platform. Um, we will be bringing our our new simulator to market on Steam as well as Windows 10 when when that gets sorted out. So um, we're look definitely looking to expand, <coughs> but. Yeah, Steam's still going to be in the picture. How long do you continue, uh, plan to continue to develop and promote FSX Steam Edition? Yeah, it's it's, it's a good question, and and to be honest, for the for the foreseeable future, there is a limited amount we can do to it, just because we can't we can optimize it for for the Steam platform, but we can't change any of the actual content. If that makes the core yeah. content, so yeah, that so makes there, sense. So there's only a limited amount we can fix for lack of a better word but yeah fsx i mean we've we've had a tremendous reaction from both the steam community and the flight simulation community on it and we don't have any plans to let go of it anytime soon cool that's very good to hear and again very encouraging stuff in using fsx steam edition i've completely switched from cd edition and i gotta say it's a lot whatever changes you guys have made it's a lot more stable than the original fsx so i was very happy with that certainly is there anything you want to cover amy specifically kind of mention that um aside from the the existing community websites you know we have um fsx insider which is you know a place where you can get all the latest news on fsx steam edition and 
you know, also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Cool. And we'll have all those links in the show notes. Um, unfortunately, it sounds like Callum, or it looks like Callum wasn't able to make it. Uh, so we'll kind of wrap things up here. But thank you so much for coming on, Amy. And uh, I hope we hear again from you again in the future as we find out more about the new sim. Awesome. Yeah, I'd like that. Thank you for having me. You're, you're very welcome. I appreciate it. So, Jordan, uh, any shout-outs we want to do real quickly before we wrap things up? Well, as usual, check out my airline, FusionAirways.com, me on Twitter, at jgreen, and uh, FSElite.com coming soon for the podcast and other FSX and flight sim-related news. Cool. And I don't have any shout-outs in particular. Uh, Amy, you want to give any shout-outs? Um. Just to, I mean, to to the flight simulation community, the developers and the publish, publishers, and of course to, to Dovetail, you know, for making all of this possible. It's great to see such a resurgence coming out of FSX Steam Edition, and, you know, we couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, I'm very excited for the future, and it's, it does seem like you guys are getting a lot, lot more support from the flight simulator community, which is good. Um, and now I remember my question. Uh, going back to the license part of it. Obviously, you guys got the rights to distribute Flight Sim uh, FSX for Steam Edition and the rights to use Flight Sim technology to develop further products. Is that purely for entertainment purposes, or can you take it in a more serious direction if you wanted to? We are developing purely for entertainment purposes. Um, Dovetail Games is an entertainment, or a simulation entertainment company. That's kind of our our direction yeah that makes sense so i mean obviously there's there's kind of a split and i notice uh, you know there's a lot of action going on in the flight sim community between uh, prepared 3d obviously is a big platform going forward but i guess that's more for serious simmers and uh what you guys are doing is purely for entertainment purposes and you know i'm a serious simmer but i you know i view it as a game so i don't know if that's necessarily the case I think that just Lockheed has to market it the way they have to market it. Their game, they're marketed differently, but the same at the same time. I mean, I don't. The academic edition of Prepared is ridiculously expensive, but I don't anticipate new Sims to be much cheaper than that anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, it comes down to lawyer issues, I think. By the time we're done with it, of course, so. it's all. They're all. Yeah, exactly. So all that's, right, that's the whole conversation. Yep. Well, thank you so much again, Amy. I really appreciate it, and. Uh, no We'll get out of here. Uh, Just a reminder that uh, FS Elite is a group effort by the FS Elite group. And our music, should we decide to use it, is by Attica Attica. Check them out at bandcamp.com slash Attica Attica. Until next time, stay safe, stay sane. Happy landings. Bye. Um, so this week we have a special interview with Amy Sarji. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Sanjari. Sanjari. Amy Sanjari oh, of Dovetail Games. Let me do that again. Uh, so this week we have a very special interview with Amy Sanjari of Dovetail Games. Dovetail Games is located in the UK and they currently support FSX Steam Edition. Did I lose somebody? I don't think so. Did you? Amy? Hello? Oh, okay. Nope. Apparently not. <laughs> I heard a sound. Dang it. Oh, that was good, too. Yeah, it was. All right, let's do it again. Um, just, I'm talking about add-on developers. Um, in the developers that we talked to so far uh, about, uh, you know, kind of the ESP platform, which is the game engine that Microsoft uh, Flight Sim uses, um, there's a lot of, obviously, reliance there on the core technology that whoever's developing Flight Sim uh, uses. Do you guys view that as, I mean, do you do you see kind of how, do you understand I, the importance long. of it? Sorry. What? Nick, you took too long. That's going to sound ridiculous. <laughs> that was like a three-minute question, man. All try right. Again. All right. I'll try again. Uh, you know what? Let's just forget that one and move on.
Sorry. Uh, no worries. This so, is why it's recorded. Yes, and why I, <laughs> why I edit. Uh, wow. So let's see. No we, live streams for you, Nick. Yeah, no kidding. I'm gonna skip the next one. Um. Uh, so, Jordan, any other questions you want to ask? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um. Okay. Let's let's. Uh, I'll prompt you again. All right. So, so that's where. All right. So that's where we're going. Yeah, right. that's where we're going because my list of questions just ended. All right. Um. Rather unexpectedly, too. Okay. Well, I'll ask your question. I'll ask your question in a way. Okay. About- okay. Uh, all right. Let me re- <laughs> let me rephrase that. I um kind of oh, want to yeah kind of what I wanted to uh, ask next was um oh crap I lost my train of thought I'm sorry guys. And listen to Attica, 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 Attica. If you enjoyed listening to the FSME podcast, please click the subscribe button below for more. Or just click one of the links above to listen to one of the other podcasts.